Alex Bowman will not appeal his penalty at the Roval. Haley Deegan announces her 2025 plans and NASCAR has a Spygate scandal on their hands. <music> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Before we get into the news, I have hats now. Well, technically one hat as the sample hat to see what it would look like, but I don't think it looks too bad, honestly. Uh, typically I only wear hats when I'm maybe at the racetrack or maybe if it's going to be really sunny out. Either way, I like the way this one looks. Let me know in the comments if you like it, if you think I should put it on sale, and then we'll go from there. But into today's news, starting off with the biggest story of the day, that will be Hendrick Motorsports electing not to appeal Alex Bowman's penalty from this past weekend's race at the Roval. If you missed it, in post-race inspection, Alex Bowman's car was found to be underweight, even under the 17 pounds that NASCAR gives teams, and he was disqualified from the race, taking him out of the round of eight because he advanced on in the playoffs, and then moving Joey Logano into the round of eight, so he doesn't have to be as pissed off at Austin Dillon as he probably already would have been, considering he was out by four points. If he wins Richmond, that's five points, but Austin Dillon ran through him and you know how it all went down in that situation. So Logano gets to advance on now. Bowman is out and it had everybody wondering how the heck did this happen? And a lot of people point to Alex Bowman getting airborne on the front stretch chicane, um, the last corner of the racetrack on Sunday, come crashing down. And from the onboard camera from behind him, you can see things coming out from underneath the car. Listen, unless some ballast fell out of the car, the carbon fiber pieces that everybody saw there is not enough weight to make up the difference here. So Hendrick Motorsports acknowledged that this was a mistake on their part in their statement on Monday afternoon. In their statement, Hendrick Motorsports says, Hendrick Motorsports will not appeal the disqualification of the number 48 car following Sunday's race at the Charlotte Roval. NASCAR allows a clear margin to account for the difference in pre and post race weight. After a thorough review by our team and the sanctioning body, we simply did not give ourselves enough margin to meet the post race requirement. Although unintentional, the infraction was avoidable. We are extremely disappointed to lose a playoff spot under these circumstances and apologize to our fans and partners. An absolutely brutal way for for Alex Bowman to exit the playoffs because he has been really, really good in the playoffs so far. Two stage wins, a guy that has constantly just been putting himself in the right spots to gain as many points as possible on that day and advance on. Now, did he have a chance of advancing on into the championship? Uh, who knows? There are two racetracks in that uh, round of eight that he has won at, both at Las Vegas and at Martinsville. So it's entirely possible that he could have, especially if they found speed at the right time. Unfortunately, like they said, they did not leave themselves enough of a margin. Yeah, it passed Tech on Saturday. It did not pass Tech on Sunday because they were probably playing with razor thin margins at that point one thing for certain it was not because of something that fell off uh in that ramp on the front stretch where he attempted to get airborne and sail his way on over to statesville no instead it just looks like a team error at that point which is a bummer for him uh even the uh cmo of ally chief marketing officer of ally uh tweeted out on monday she didn't sleep very much and she's gutted for alex bowman that 48 team she has been a staunch alex bowman supporter and uh, yeah i mean for sure bummed because for Bowman, he was a guy, like I keep saying, in those tier rankings I put out, threaten him with Spire every year if he's going to perform this well, because he was a guy whose job was very much in question and now had gone on this really good run in the playoffs, had looked really, really good, did everything right, and then unfortunately has something like this happen. So Alex Bowman officially out, Hendrick Motorsports electing not to appeal the disqualification, Joey Logano officially in. The Joey Logano streak of showing up in the final four on every even number year continues on, and hey, all I'm saying is, hey, listen, Joey Logano, you put him into the round of eight. He's dangerous. He's frisky. He's going to make some noise, and he has an opportunity to maybe win at Las Vegas because that's what he does in the postseason. So we'll wait and see what happens there. We also learned on Monday what Haley Deegan's 2025 plans are. And for all the NASCAR fanboys of Haley Deegan, you're going to be disappointed because it does not include NASCAR. Instead, in 2025, she will transition from stock cars to open wheel cars when she will join the Indy NXT, formerly known as the Indy Light Series, full-time in 2025, driving for HMD Motorsports, an absolute powerhouse uh, in that series. For Haley, it's an interesting move, a weird move, because... Well, she doesn't have any experience in a Grand Prix open wheel style race car. Her only open wheel experience is like, you know, micro sprints at Millbridge. That's not racing around the streets of St. Pete. Uh, so now she's going to get 14 races, the full schedule in 2025 with HMD to prove what she can do. And honestly, I'm just not sure that it's 
going to pan out maybe how she and her fans want it to. It really feels like this might be the Lindsay Brewer 2.0 experiment here. If you're not familiar, Lindsay Brewer was, is an Instagram influencer. Instagram model, uh, did some racing, some USF stuff, then moved up to Indy NXT this season with Hunkos and got dropped like halfway through the season because the pace just wasn't there and the level of progression just wasn't there. Haley Deeg is a good driver. Is she good enough to compete You know, at the highest levels? I'm not 100% sold yet. Um, even at the ARCA levels, she, uh, the ARCA national level, no. At the ARCA uh, West level, she competed um, at times. But since then, it's like, uh, I feel like the talent level is kind of plateaued compared to the levels that she's trying to move up to. Now we'll get to see what she can do in an open wheel car. Uh, she tested an F3 car recently. Maybe that was enough there that they saw in the test that she can make this transition. And maybe if she does good enough, she can, you know, transition on to the F1 Academy or something like that. But I'm, I'm just cautious in terms of expectations here. And I think everybody should be because she doesn't have that experience yet. And it feels like she's probably going to be wildly off the pace when they get to St. Pete uh, come March. But we'll sit back and see what happens for Haley Deegan. I still think that her future likely involves off-road racing of some sort. Um, I don't think the stock car stuff has worked out too well for her. Um, we'll have to wait and see how this uh, pans out for her. Expect her to be good on ovals. Like I think that in an Indy NXT car, she's definitely going to be good on ovals. We heard back at Iowa earlier in the year when IndyCar was there that she had done a seat fitting. Um, at that time, I was hearing that she did it for Andretti Global. Uh, maybe she did, maybe she didn't, uh, but definitely, you know, where there was smoke, there was fire. It just took a while for the information to finally, or the deal to finally be finalized in the sense. But hey, I guess we're going to get to see what Haley Deegan can do next year. And NDXT races, I believe, will be on FS1 too. So people will be able to tune in and watch and, uh, and see. On Monday, we also found out that NASCAR has its own Spygate scandal. I shouldn't be excited about that because it's actually bad. Uh, what are they, like IndyCar with Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing? Is the FBI going to raid a shop in NASCAR? Eh, not really sure about that one yet. But what we do know is that the Associated Press and Jenna Fryer are reporting that a Joe Gibbs Racing engineer that all stems from this one engineer um, has is in a contract year. He's been talking to other teams about possible opportunities for 2025 and beyond. But in his time talking to them, he's been offering up information. And according to uh, the AP, now the Associated Press did ask NASCAR for a comment this past weekend at Charlotte. NASCAR acknowledged that they have heard these accusations. They will not com comment publicly on it because, well, no complaint has been filed. No lawsuit has been filed yet. So there's no action for them to take in these circumstances. But according to the AP, NASCAR did also acknowledge to them that they have heard that this individual, that this engineer, has sold setup sheets to a team whose cars are not in the playoffs in exchange for cash. Now, who are these teams? Of course, that's going to be the question that everybody's asking here. Uh, well, they said cars. So JTG, Doherty Racing, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., you're safe. Yeah, sit over here. Enjoy that towel they go in. Now, who had cars that weren't in the playoffs? So that leaves us with Rick Ware Racing, Front Row Motorsports, Legacy Motor Club, which is in the Toyota family, so it feels like that probably isn't where they were, uh, you know, giving their information to, or Richard Childress Racing. Now, who of that is it? Remains to be seen. The internet has some certain ideas. I think I have a pretty decent idea on who it is. Uh, NASCAR can't issue any sort of penalties, and some other teams are apparently like, uh, somebody needs to file a complaint or a lawsuit here because there's no ramifications if somebody's just out there uh, sharing information at this point. So... Yeah, I mean, sharing setup sheets is like big time. And I don't necessarily think that the short term money grab in this situation is going to be, you know, good for the long term future of this individual in the sport. Selling information, selling setup sheets is very stupid. It's like turning your turn signal on when you're heading into a roundabout. It's like we can only go one direction here. Uh, if you're selling information, there's only one direction for you in the sport, and that's out of it at this point. So there's a lot going on in NASCAR right now, and honestly, it gives us a lot to talk about here. Uh, obviously, the charter thing is going to go on for quite some time, and when more information comes out about that, we'll talk about it. But there's a lot of stuff happening on and off track that's good and bad in a sense, I guess. Um, obviously, this is bad in terms of like, it just goes against like a code of conduct. Like don't, don't give, don't sell information away. Like, right, it's corporate espionage. It happens. I get it. People want to make some money. I understand that. And hey, if you're leaving the sport and you don't want to be in it anymore, certainly one heck of a way to go out. But you know, at least it wasn't a Nigel Stepney type of situation where you're going down and 
uh, you know, making a bunch of copy of documents at the local print shop. And then they're like, wait a second, I'm going to call up the FIA here and be like, hey, we got this over here. Um, if you're not aware of what that is, look up F1 Spygate scandal and go from there. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this one all pans out. But what a weird day. There's <laughs> a lot of things happening, um, you know, in NASCAR and NASCAR adjacent worlds on Monday. So let me know in the comments what you think about, let me know in the comments what you think about Alex Bowman, disqualification, and Hendrick Motorsports accepting that, Haley Deegan's future in the Andy NXT series, and, well, NASCAR's new Spygate scandal that we learned about on Monday. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.